Hey guys, this is Phil from UnderCage.com. This is Xperia Z5 that we're gonna take a look today. So this has got the same design again. Uh, we're kind of getting tired of it. Uh, HTC has adopted for three generations with the same design. Now Sony, on the other hand, now is with the five additional generations past the original Xperia Z series. Uh, Xperia Z started off with the iconic design, then there was Z1, 2, 3, 4, or 3 plus if you're living anywhere else in Japan, and then here's the Z5. And it's almost as identical if you don't really uh, put a precise look at it. Now, one of the things that they have added is Xperia logo on the right hand side bottom here. I don't really get why it should say Xperia twice because it says it on the back. Is that only because it says Sony twice on front and back? I really don't get it. And um, overall build quality is okay. It's actually pretty good. But even Chinese manufacturers do this by the time of 2015, so we can't really particularly give additional points to here. And the volume rocker is here, right on the bottom, thanks to the fingerprint reader that probably requires a lot more space there. And it's really hard to press. We would have liked it to be on the left hand side corner, but they didn't. But um, we're gonna talk about that just in a second. And the earphone jack is still on top. We would have preferred that a lot better if that was on the bottom. And the frosted glass in the back is actually a looker, but it feels kind of as, as tempered inside. Instead of protruding to outside and probably being flat to the metal frame to the Z3, the Z5 one is actually kind of like pushed back inside. And that probably is to prevent that from breaking too easily. So the metal frame touches the ground first when it's dropped on the floor, but it, gives us a feeling that it's not as well built as the Z3 or the other Xperia series war. Now the display is still ranging at 1080p. At 5.2 inches of a screen size, we think that is actually okay, but with that amount of money, with that much money, it does give you the feeling that you're not getting the most out of your penny that you paid for without the QHD resolution. Now the brightness is okay and the color reproduction is good and the viewing angle is actually pretty good as well. But the default color balance as it is shipped to you is actually pretty inaccurate. It has this magenta tint on it so you might as well want to calibrate that yourself by the white balance mode, uh, the button there. Uh, I strongly recommend that you do that. Unlike the audio effects of Sony, the visual effect of it is actually pretty bad. Uh, of course, it's a visual effect. They call it image enhancement. And there's X-Reality and Super Vivid Mode. Super Vivid Mode definitely is out of the, out of the topic today. But even the X-Reality, it distorts the image too much. And it distorts it to the level that our eyes get sore. So it's strongly recommended if you're feeling uncomfortable by any chance by the Im image enhancement, is strongly recommended that you turn off all the image settings. And plus, the outside legibility is good, but um, we're getting the feeling that maybe the glass is way too easy to be broken. Uh, we have added, uh, we have attached two tempered glasses on these guys with different manufacturer of the tempered glasses, and they broke in almost identical pattern. On the forum, there's a lot of people talking about the glasses breaking by themselves. We don't really by 100% agree to the breaking by itself terminology, but it is definitely prone to breaking a lot more easily than the other guys. We mainly think that this is because of the too tight uh, of a squeezing between the metal frame and the glass covered by the metal frame. Now talking about the call quality, Xperia has never been one hero for the call quality and the Xperia Z5 is no exception. The call quality is actually okay. It's not as bad as the predecessors are, but you still wouldn't want this as your business phone. Uh, the call options bring you a lot of enhancements like the slow talk that slows down the participant's uh, voice so it's easier for you to listen to the faster uh, talking if you ever need that. And there's equalizer that brings you from normal to bright voice. And that's pretty good, but still, I wouldn't use this for calling too much. Well, considering it's a phone, it's a pretty bad thing. And the sound effect is one thing that I use Sony for a lot. And audio settings here is a sound effect that brings you a bunch of equalizers. Uh, unique is my favorite, uh, but the here, here is the clear base there. It boosts up your clear, uh, boosts up your base very clearly without distorting the base sound. And there's even automatic optimization that brought that was brought from the Z4 tablet in the first place. 
it brings you, it analyzes your earphones. There's a preset of the earphones that it knows and it brings the optimization to specific earphone that you have plugged in. Uh, we were not exactly a big fan of it, but it's there. Uh, surround sound, not, not a big fan of it, but there is DSE HX that upscales the audio file, so it gets you more detail. That's not exactly the details, but it's supposed to get you more clear and detailed sound uh, artificially. So it's there, and it does support the noise cancelling. If you go to accessory settings there, if you have a compatible earphones, and it even supports the LDAC. That is a higher bitrate wireless sound. So it's even better than the APTX. If you have a compatible headphone, there is a small range of the lineup from Sony themselves. You'll be able to enjoy a whole higher quality sound through wireless headphones. Now the point here, now the problem here is that the, since its update, lastly it started with the very last build of KitKat, but um, they dropped support for the global sound effect, which means that you'll be limited to Sony's own music app, which got changed its name from music uh, from Walkman to music. Sony's own music app, or the very limited supply of the apps that support the global uh, support the sound effect. So if you're using any other third-party apps or the video apps that does not support get support by Sony, you won't be able to enjoy the sound effects, which is really good. So that, that's a little shame on that, Sony. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're ever going to fix that. I think they're intending to drop the global sound effect support, so that's that. Now talking about the camera, the, the DxO Mark Mobile has given it the top mobile camera it's ever tested, but we're not really sure if it's that good. It's definitely better than the previous experience. They had a terrible camera, but um, it's still a lot better than the previous one, but it still sticks to the Superior Auto. Now, Superior Auto is supposedly analyze the scene that you're taking and choose the scene according to, this, according to the object that you're taking photo of, but it rather does a very lousy job at doing it, and it forces you to take a photo limited to only 8.3 megapixels compared to the three. 23 megapixels of the entire pixels that you have. So it's very strongly suggested that you switch to manual every time you take a photo and do nothing. You don't have to go manual, you don't have to be calculating everything, just switch manual and take a photo. That still is a whole lot better than Superior Auto. One of the things here is that you cannot set manual as a default value when you launch a screen. So let's say that you're in manual, you take a photo, you leave the screen and you get back into camera by any chance is set back to the Superior Auto. Unless you read this guy, you'll be stuck to Superior Auto every time you turn it on. Uh, the focusing is very fast. The focusing moving is very fast and low lighting condition photo is really good too. Uh, but we're not really sure if it's digital zoom is as good as Sony claims it to be. They say five times digital zoom is now crispier than ever. It is crispier, but we really don't think it's anything better than just having a sharpened filter on top of the photo. It's good camera, it's good, but it's not as good as Galaxy S6 or the G4 or the other competitors in the market. I th we think it's better than the iPhone, but not as good as the other higher spec Androids. The front facing camera is definitely better, but it's not as good as the competitors like the Galaxy S6, namely that was really, really good front facing camera. Now the performance wise, it has Snapdragon 810 built in, by talking about the Snapdragon 810, it's a real beast. It's real beast in performance and it's real beast in the heat issues as well. Talking about the heat, Sony has done everything they could. They added up the heat sink, they had the thermal paste, and they had throttled the CPU. Uh, they didn't throttle it that badly, which gives you a plenty of performance on this phone, which leaves you with a lot of heat on the backside over there. Sony has always had a problem with the heat management, and the Xperia Z5 is no exception you'll be able to feel the heat even on the November is turning into mid-autumn now, it still is hot. Uh, web surfing, movies, and uh, 4K video, definitely everything brings you plenty of heat on the back so you don't, you, you don't freeze out your hand. Uh, definitely not a good thing. And one of the things that we're disappointed with is that it's got 3 gigabytes of RAM instead of 4 gigabytes that they could have added. And um, with 3 gigabytes of RAM, that is okay for the full HD device, but we still hope that with that much of money, we could have gotten this 4 gb RAM. Now, internal storage is now boosted up to 32 gigabytes. Sony has been sticking up to that tiny 16 gigabyte of the storage, even for their flagship device for a very long time. Now it's expanded up to 32, and you will be left with about 22 gigabytes of user accessible storage. 
You can expand that even more further by adding up a micro SD card on this slot here. The tray is incorporated with the SIM card tray, so it's really tricky to properly install your micro SD card. It's not exactly the easiest way to do that. Now talking about the fingerprint reader, it's one of the big thing of the Xperia Z5. It's on the right hand side replacing the traditional circular power key. Now it's in the oval shape, meaning that it's in, uh, it's in the horizontal position. So it reads your finger better if your finger is placed horizontally. So here, if you're righty, it's a no biggie. It will have a plenty of space. My hands are actually getting sweaty. It will ha have plenty of space to recognize your finger. For the most of the times, it works really well with your right hand because it's got plenty of space. But if you're using a, your left hand uh, mainly to control your phone, you'll be accessing your fingerprint reader like that from the bottom. So it doesn't really have much of the pattern to be read with that short of a sensor attached to your finger. So it's not as accurate as you would as it would be when you're using your right hand and you'll be facing a lot of errors locking your phone down. So that's one thing and volume rocker is down on the bottom here which is better with the left hand. So power like that and volume like that. So it's better with your left hand but fingerprint reader is better with your right hand and your volume key is almost inaccessible with your right hand unless you do that. So it would have been better if they just put volume rocker here. It would have been better for both of the hands. Both of the hands to access, access the volume rocker but they didn't do that. Now the software wise is just a traditional Sony Lollipop. They tried not to skin this guy a lot too much from the vanilla Android and it maintains that uh, idea and we really like that. But the thing is it's not as fast as smooth as it's supposed to be. I don't know why but it's, st it's still kind of laggy and it has some dropped frames. Uh, it's okay, it's almost pure Android except for the icons, but the icons is one of the things that we really don't like. It's too bright, even to the level is kind of childish. Now following the material design is definitely a good thing, but we would have liked a auto uh, brightness toggle there so we can turn on and off that thing. And the soft kit is taking too much space. We would have definitely appreciated an option to make that thinner or just a thinner soft key to come with in the first place. Now the battery life, uh, it ranges from about the 4 hours and 20 minutes to 5 hours. That's definitely not bad, but not as good for a 2015 flagship smartphone. Unlike the Xperia Z3, which has a quick charge support for the only Japanese model, now Z5 brings it to the global model, which they should have a long time ago. The charging takes about an hour and 45 minutes from 2% to 100% that we have tested and that's definitely not as fast as we would like to be. Uh, some of the packages in some regions even get bundled with the Quick Charge 2.0 supported charger but not all of the regions are getting that so you might as well want to check that before you purchase one. They got rid of the docking port there. We, we're, we really like that magnetic port. Uh, it, brought us with the really good cradle but they got rid of that. We don't know why, maybe because some of some of the customers were complaining that the magnetic port was actually getting out of the place of the phone. Instead of the fixing that, Sony decided to get rid of it as whole. Of course they can uh, justify themselves by saying that the capless USB port uh, replaces the magnetic port but we would have appreciated both of them. Now that short battery life mainly is because of Snapdragon 810 being a power hogging uh, CPU and because of the small battery capacity uh, overall but we're not exactly happy with that. You could adopt for the stamina mode that Sony has bring a lot of effort but our 4G LT connection got really unstable with the stamina mode so you might as well want to avoid that too. Now as a conclusion, I'm a Sony fan. I've been using an Xperia Z3 for a long time. Before this, I've had a Z1 and Xperia Z. I even have a smart band tug. I'm not wearing one because I'm testing my uh, Gear S2, but I have a smart band tug. Not, not even necessary to talk about the previous of the Sonys that I had, the Next 5 and the CD Walkmans and mini discs, everything. But still, I I'm kind of getting tired of it. Sony is failing to show us what they can do and we're getting really tired of the same industrial design over a few years. And they're getting too many phones at too short of the terms between each other. Now, except for the price, this is definitely not a bad phone. But the thing is, this costs almost, a almost a twice as what Z3 would cost. And there are a few improvements here and there, but there are some drawbacks and the improvements are not that good. 
So if you're get, thinking about getting a Z5, we would rather suggest you to get the Z3 for a lot cheaper price, if you have to get a Sony, that is. So that was Xperia Z5 review. If you're scared about getting a Z3 because that sounds like a really old phone, they only have one they only have one year apart from the launching date, so don't worry, you're not getting a really aged phone at all. So that was Xperia Z5 review. We'll get back with more very soon. Stay tuned. And until then, we got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Google Plus. So stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later. Bye.